Hey everyone, it's Nightlight9, and in this video, I'm going to be going over ultimate weapons. Uh, how you get them, where you find them, and then I will be looking through them and pointing out which ones I am looking to, to get first. Um, and then maybe, you know, give any insight I can into each one individually for you guys. Okay, so with ultimate weapons, uh, and then there's Genji Blade, which I'm going to kind of talk about as a separate type of ultimate weapon. Because although it's also called an ultimate weapon, it cannot be obtained through tokens. It can only be obtained through pulls. There's a pity system for it, but I also want to talk about how difficult those weapons are going to be moving forward because it may shock some people if you haven't read the notices very clearly. So what you need to get ultimate weapons are these tokens. And as you can see here uh, in this battle tower, um, you get these tokens for clearing these floors, okay? Uh, you get two tokens per floor, 50 floors upon release, two floors a day after that, I believe up to floor 100. They will possibly be putting out, or I think they're, they are going to put out a high difficulty one after this one. So I assume there will be even more ways to earn them. But for now, there's only two ways to earn them. Uh, there's the Battle Tower and then also the new Cetra Story event. And if you look here in Solo, go to Rewards, you get... Uh, anywhere from 30 to 40, I believe, uh, for clearing, you know, different different uh, stages of this. Then you go to the exchange shop, and under Metal Exchange, they've added a new section down here for Ultimate Metals, and that is where you can see them. This is every one that's available to us right now, with the exception of Genji Blade. Each one costs 100, and so far, with clearing all of the story parts of the stages in the Cetra event, and clearing all of the currently available floors in the tower, I have 204. That means I could unlock two of these weapons. Now, I'm gonna just going to start off with the two that I would that I am looking at the most. I don't know if I want to get both of them as my first two or just one. I'm gonna kind of wait until I see, I don't know, what I think will benefit me more in the moment. But one of them is Matt's, the ultimate broadsword axis. And before I get into what it does, I do want to note these at the moment, it doesn't seem like there's any way to overboost them. They come out at six star and you can increase them all the way up to level 120. And the way that our abilities are increased is by raising that level. So at level 20, 40, 60, 80, 90, 100, 110, and 120, you get an increase in the R ability, all the way up to this max stat here, which you can see. So what does Broadsword Axis do? It restores 25% of max HP to all allies, also gives regen, which is really low, but it's one tick of regen. Regen ticks about once every three seconds. Uh, it also removes physical defense down and magical defense down to all allies. Uh, this is huge for survivability. Even the second part, can be very, very helpful uh, in the right content. But getting access to an instant heal, regardless of ATB, is always going to help you clear content. Because survivability is probably the first thing you need. It's the first box you need to check when you're doing something that's difficult. Then damage, also important. But if you can't survive, you can't deal damage. 25% also is very interesting. I mean, let's, let's put it this way. Most of our parties, people have typically 10,000 plus HP. There might be times when there's a little bit less. There's also plenty of times when you're coming in with 11, 12, or maybe even 13,000 HP. So 25% at 10,000 obviously is 2,500 heal for everybody. Uh, that is not bad. And is I think depending on who you're gonna be using more between Aerith or Matt would be how I kind of decided this because the other one that I would be looking to go for first is Aerith's ultimate guard stick and here at max it does 50% of healing potency to all allies okay so it's a cure-all also gives the one tick of regen and removes physical attack down and magical attack down so the difference being obviously Matt's is even more survivability based because it's taking um, the defense down debuffs off where this is is kind of also helping you maintain damage uh, so they're not identical by any means uh, because the second ability is kind of the opposite for each one and the way that the healing works is different for each one. 
because Matt's is a flat 25%, his healing stat's not factored into that heal. That could be a big deal for certain parties. Uh, Aerith's obviously, the higher your healing stat, the more you're gonna get out of it. You also get, you know, these R abilities with it, but these are the two weapons that I would be looking for. And, you know, both of them have the heal stat on there, so that's pretty helpful if you're using them, either as a support healer or a dedicated healer. Uh, those are the ones that I am most interested in first, but let's go ahead and go through each one of them and I'll give my brief thoughts. Clouds, 1000% physical and magical non-elemental damage. Uh, this is fine, but it's nothing exciting. Physical attack decrease though, and magical attack decrease high on a single enemy gives some really nice utility to Cloud for survivability. While debuffs are generally stronger than buffs, they have a downside, which is how they kind of balance each other out. Not every boss or every enemy can be debuffed in specific ways, and some of them won't be able to, you won't be able to use the physical attack or the magical attack debuff on them. So that's obviously something to note. Uh, boost ability potency, boost physical defense, both fine. Um, I think the ability potency is going to help him dish out some more damage. I think this is something that deserves consideration, mostly because the more, if you, if you use your ultimate weapon to do some utility, I'm not saying that that means you don't have to take in utility, but it allows you some more flexibility when setting up your team when you're trying to balance that survivability versus damage and what weapons or sub weapons you're taking and maybe even what characters. Ultimate Gatlin gun is basically his agitation move, uh, physical defense high for all allies, and then a very small heal. But if you have his weapon that does agitation, there's an argument to say that, well, this isn't giving us anything new. Uh, however, depending on the fight, if there's only one part of the fight where you need that high potency physical defense increase, uh, and then if you have that and can survive through it, maybe you can finish the boss or whatever. Well, this might be good to take because then you it frees up a slot for you to bring something different on Barrett, perhaps. Uh, ultimate Leather Gloves. This one uh, is physical attack increase mid to all allies and magical attack increase mid to all allies. I think that's pretty strong. Uh, the fact that it's an AOE and buffs both attacks, I mean, that's, that's always going to be useful. And again, not something that, that Tifa really has much access to. All of her utility is mostly debuff oriented and it's mostly single target. So having a party wide um, attack increase is pretty good. Uh, and I, I think that that makes this worth some consideration. Ultimate Leather Collar is another heal one, only it's not as bursty of a heal. It gives 27% healing potency to all allies, so it is a cure-all, and it isn't, you know, it's about half, almost half of Aerith, a little bit more. But then 12 seconds of regen, and so I don't really know the math on that. I don't use the red regen a lot, but it's going to be four ticks of regen. Does that equal the same as like 50%? I don't know. Uh, probably close, probably maybe even a little bit better. Uh, he doesn't have the second part that you know, Matt and Aerith have, which is why I would not be looking at this weapon at the moment. Ultimate four point shuriken, physical attack increase high, magical attack increase high to self. That's what I don't like about this. I would rather have Tifa's mid potency to everybody than a high high just to self. Uh, the fact also is you're not typically building both physical and magical attack on yourself. You're usually kind of going towards one direction of that. And while this will help with things like summon or limit breaks and things of that nature, um, again, my my other big complaint with, with Yuffie is that, you know, uh, as DPSs go, she doesn't have many sigil breaks, so she's not usually my first choice, but if she is for you, you could consider this. It's just, I, I don't think it adds quite as much value as a lot of these other ones do. Kate Sith's ultimate yellow megaphone. I was really hoping that this would, because it's, the yellow megaphone <laughs> would have something to do with crit. Uh, it does not. It doesn't even give crit as an R ability. It gives buff debuff extension, which is very weird because the yellow megaphone does not, doesn't work that way. It's all about critting. So uh, this is, seems like a mix. Mi this seems like a Mitch. So this seems a little bit like a mismatch, but uh, what does it do? Increases limit gauge 30%. So it'll refill just under a third of a limit gauge bar uh, for a single ally. 
Also, a very, very small uh, heal. Um, you know, I'm sure there's some niche use cases for this. Um, getting off another limit could be a big deal. And so I wouldn't discount it, but I don't know. It would take some testing. It's not something that I would just blindly recommend. Ultimate Quicksilver is very similar, only it only works on self, but you get an extra 10%. Now, this is, I think, maybe, although it's not as flexible because it's self only, Vincent is known for his limits, and some of them are extremely strong. So when you need this, I think this one is more, I don't know, I like it a little bit better, I'll put it that way. But not something I'm still not looking for these off off the top or off the bat. Um, ultimate Type 99 Longsword, Physical Defense Decrease, Potency High to a Single Enemy, Magical Defense Decrease, Potency High to a Single Enemy. Uh, this is going to help, again, do a lot of damage, but it's kind of like the opposite of Clouds, right? Clouds takes their attack stat down. This is enabling your DPS by lowering their defense. And the same argument can be made where when you can use it, it's going to have a pretty big impact on the damage you do. However, the counterpoint to that is some bosses, some enemies, just it won't work on them. So you have to keep that in mind. And that's about everything I have to say for that. Ultimate Nameless is interesting because it's one of the only ones, maybe the only one that has something higher than 1000% here. 1500% 1, physical, magical, non elemental damage. And when debuff is granted to the target, times two damage. So this is very similar to uh, his third limit break which does 1100% physical, magical, non-elemental damage, and times two if there's a buff granted on Sephiroth. If you have the second condition granted, then you're looking at 3000%, which is very high, uh, versus 2200%, you know, with uh, his regular limit. Will 3000% make a huge difference? I want to say typically no, because you can only use it once, and it doesn't seem like it's going to do the kind of damage that's going to make or break most fights. So for that reason, uh, I I really would not consider this at the moment. Ultimate personal style is a magic defense increase to all allies, and it's supposedly high. I think this is also worth consideration because, you know, if you're rocking people like Glenn, um, I feel like you're probably doing a lot of damage, or at least that's what the, the name of the game is for those teams. Uh, if you don't have something like Kimura Wand, this is a pretty big deal to have. And maybe I can see some use cases where you're, you're just going in with like as much damage as you can, and you only need a little bit of survivability because hopefully you're going to be taking the boss down pretty significantly quick. This might allow you to kind of forego having to have some of that utility in your party. Otherwise, if you need it long term, it's probably more often than not, not quite good enough. Uh, and then ultimate V39, which is Lucia's physical attack increase high on a single ally, which I like better than self because it just makes you that much more flexible and magic attack increase potency high to a single ally. So to me, this is just better than the other version of this weapon that does the same thing only to yourself. For that reason, I think it's better. Now, whether or not you're using Lucia as much, you know, that that's another question to ask yourself, but it's going to help you pump out some damage. And for that reason, you know, I think that this is also consideration. So uh, probably we'll be looking for either Mats and Aeriths or Mats or Aeriths, and then another one to shore up whatever weaknesses you have. I would probably lean more towards using him for utility, um, you know, either a buff or debuff than I would for damage because I'm just not that impressed, even with Sephiroth's damage. And I don't think that's going to make the difference for you. One thing I didn't note yet that I actually wanted to touch on is that the way that these stats work over here is it actually gives those stats to your character as if it was your main hand weapon. So, uh, you know, same thing with our abilities. It's not like it has it like a sub weapon or even a secondary weapon does. That also is something to consider, I would say to a little bit lesser extent than the, you know, UC ability but it is something that you might want to take note of when kind of deciding on which one of these weapons you want. 
The next thing I want to talk about is Genji Blade and I guess limited ultimate weapons in general. So there is a pity system, as I had said in my pull video, every time you do a premium 10 draw, you know, which is any basically 10 draw on a banner, you will get 10 of these shards. And if you see here, I've done 12, so I have 120 of these towards 300 before it's guaranteed. Uh, so it is a pity. Uh, it does take quite a bit, though. I'm hoping if this is featured on future draws in this, um, you know, one year anniversary event, like over the next couple of weeks, if it is still featured on other banners, that would be great. I don't know that that's going to be the case. They might come out with more of these. I think they probably will. And so I think I'll end up having to maybe make a decision on which one I get. But that's neither here nor there. I believe I covered this weapon in my pull video. Uh, if I didn't, or, you know, if you didn't watch it, 2,000 physical magical elemental damage, or non-elemental, sorry. Uh, that's, that's actually pretty good, especially considering it's two charges and considering you get physical attack and magical attack increase. Extra high potency, that's four tiers. Interruption Mastery is something that allows you to do, um, basically, you get more ability potency, which means more damage during interrupt phase after like the sigils are broken. And that is also a big deal. And these stats are significantly higher than most of the other weapons. I think even Clouds only had like 170 physical attack. One thing also though, that needs to be noted is, and I'm gonna read some of the notes that Tom Rom provided me on this so I don't mess it up. Uh, ultimate weapons, and these are from the notices. Ultimate weapons are not limited edition weapons. Newly introduced ultimate weapons will be included in certain upcoming draws in the same fashion as newly introduced weapons in past featured draws. Additionally, the Sephiroth exclusive ultimate weapon Genji Blade will also be featured in draws held this month other than the Cloud Limit Break draw. Great. But in future draws, the appearance rate of featured ultimate weapons will be 0.3%, just like Genji Blade is now. And the total appearance rate of all ultimate weapons not featured will be 0.01%. As there is one ultimate weapon available from this draw, there will be no non-featured ultimate weapons. So to break that down, 0.01% is 1 in 10 thousand yeah that is insanely low and for that reason ultimate weapons are going to be something that is i think primarily a whale based mechanic as far as getting multiple of them uh based on this pity system i think everybody will eventually be able to have access to one two and eventually more but it will take a lot of time to get access to these if you're free to play especially uh you know, if you get lucky, well, then kudos to you. Uh, and that can always happen. You know, when it's featured, it's got considerably higher you know, rates, but still 0.3% is not very much. But 0.01, 1 in 10,000. And so relying on the pity system will probably be one of the main ways that we get them or trying to draw for them when they're featured. Although, even when featured, a point. 3% rate is still pretty low. If you're interested in uh, the math on that, basically you take 100 because 100% would guarantee the weapon and you divide it by that percentage. So to get that 10,000, we took 100 divided by 0 0.01, that equals 10,000. If you're wondering what 0.3 is, same thing, 100 divided by 0.3. So 333, that means at the current rate, it takes approximately 333 pulls to, and that doesn't actually guarantee it, but that is the the average, you know, that you that it should take you to pull one. Um, yeah, so you get 10 pulls and a 10 draw. So if you take 333 and you divide that by 10, you're probably looking at one after every 33 pulls, and. Doing even more math for those of you interested, that is a, actually almost right at a hundred thousand crystals. It's actually thirty-three and a third poles. Uh, if you multiply that by three thousand, you come up with one hundred thousand. So, 
um, you know, if it's featured, it's it's very possible that you would get one maybe every other big pull session, something like that. I didn't make the rules, uh, I'm just reporting them. So that's everything I have on Ultimate Weapons. Hopefully you found this helpful. If you have any other insight, definitely leave it in a comment. Subscribe for future content if you're not already. If you are, I appreciate each and every one of your support. And as always, thanks for watching.